The Tesla Model 3 is by far Tesla's most popular car. It helped Tesla enjoy a profitable third and fourth quarter last year and following the start of deliveries in Europe and China earlier this, will soon be available in right-hand drive countries like the UK, Japan, New Zealand and Australia. As it goes on sale in different parts of the world, we're seeing Tesla tweak prices for the same. Sometimes those tweaks are the result of adding in import duties. Sometimes they add in taxes too. In the UK, for example, the Model 3 is priced from £39,850 sterling. But that price includes the mandatory 20% value added tax, or VAT, that's included on most goods and services in the country. And sometimes Tesla makes some tweaks to what its vehicles can do in order so that it can lower the price of a particular vehicle variant to qualify for whatever tax incentives are available in the target market for people who buy plug-in cars. You see, some countries that provide electric vehicle purchase incentives also implement an upper limit, either a vehicle sticker price or buyer threshold income, beyond which the vehicle isn't eligible for purchase discounts or tax incentives. In order to ensure vehicles do comply where possible, automakers can and do tweak what their vehicles offer. Tesla, because it has over-the-air software updates and cars that are basically giant computers on wheels with a large touchscreen display taking place of conventional switch gear, well, it can tweak its vehicles a lot more than other manufacturers. A while back in Germany, for example, Tesla made some changes to what was considered standard on its Model S so that bare bones Model S's with software locked battery packs and many features disabled or missing that were considered standard fit on Model S cars elsewhere in the world came in at a sticker price less than the upper threshold limit for electric car incentives. That particular move did get Tesla into trouble with authorities as some of those software locked features could be upgraded after purchase, allowing it and its customers to take advantages of the loophole without majorly affecting end vehicle specs. But now Tesla's doing it again, this time with the Model 3, and it's doing something it hasn't done before. It won't be offering an upgrade or unlock path. Earlier this week, Canada officially launched a new electric vehicle incentive program which offered citizens up to $5,000 Canadian dollars off the price of their new electric car. Unlike the US federal tax incentives for EVs, the Canadian incentive program has some pretty strict limits. And it's a little complicated. To be eligible, you have to buy a car with a base model manufacturer's suggested retail price of less than 45,000 Canadian dollars for vehicles with six or fewer seats and less than $55,000 for vehicles with seven or more seats. Interestingly, if you buy a higher spec variant of a car with a base model trim of less than $45,000, you're still eligible for the incentive as long as the trim you're buying has an MSRP of less than 55,000 Canadian dollars. As you might expect, that's resulted in a lot of automakers publishing MSRPs of just under the minimum threshold for their entry level models. The Tesla Model 3, even the Tesla Model 3 standard range as is sold in the US, was too expensive for it to be eligible for Canada's incentives. And unlike other automakers who did have cars that could be priced that low, Tesla didn't. But since the Tesla Model 3 standard range, an off-menu special order Model 3 you can only get if you call or visit a Tesla store, is essentially a more expensive Tesla Model 3 standard range plus with software locked features like limited range and no real-time navigation, Tesla made what turned out to be a pretty smart move. It took the software locked Model 3 standard range and locked it some more, reducing its real-world range from around 220 miles to just 93. Tesla then priced it at $44,999, and voila! It's a base model that meets the Canadian incentive requirements. Unlike some of its other incentive-compliant variations, however, various sites are now reporting that Tesla has confirmed that anyone who buys this particular model will not be able to unlock the full 240 miles of range that their car's battery pack is technically capable of providing, at least it does when it's in the standard range plus. 
So what's the point of this vehicle? I mean, other electric cars with the same price and far greater range are available to buy in Canada. And even though Tesla has supercharger networks and this variant could use a supercharger network, there's still not a coast to coast supercharger network in Canada. It's coming but it's not active yet. And let's be honest, this is 2019. I mean, who buys a new electric car with a sub 100 mile range? Nobody. And that's the point. This is a car that nobody is ever expected to buy. A car that technically means it's possible to buy an entry level Model 3 for under 45,000 Canadian dollars, just so that the more expensive Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus, which is the car Tesla wants you to buy for 55,000 Canadian dollars becomes eligible for the incentive by virtue of being a more expensive variant of a sub 45 grand electric car that itself isn't more than 55 grand. Complicated, eh? Technically, Tesla isn't breaking the rules. It studied them, figured out a way around them, and I assume will follow through its plan to make sure that it can get customers a discount on their new Model 3 without anyone actually buying that range limited Model 3. It's a very clever move by Tesla. It's a very sneaky move by Tesla. And I've got to admit, it's the kind of the out of box thinking that's helped Tesla become the success it is today. But do you applaud Tesla for bending the rules? Or do you think this can only end badly? Let me know below. That's it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.